members and friends of the Bethesda Methodist Mission community, I greet you all in the wonderful and strong name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a joy together with you on the second Sunday of our Giving and Stewardship series. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. As usual, friends, we begin with lighting our candle of hope, peace, and justice. And so we light the candle this week to remember all those that have died to COVID. We remember those parts of our connection, Swaziland and Mozambique, that are in turmoil. And we remember the political situation in our country as well. And we hold this before God as we light our candle this morning. Let us pray. Gracious God, we light this candle fully aware that we live in the midst of a deadly virus that is taking lives of loved ones in ways we could have never imagined. We live in fear and in worry, and our hopes and dreams keep flashing before our eyes. Lord, Gather us in your presence and break open our lives to receive all the love, all the forgiveness, and the freedom that you so freely gave. Come, let us worship. Healing and restoring God, we come together in our brokenness from the deepest, darkest places of our lives and of our world. We call out to you to make us whole again. We gather trusting that in the depths of your holy being, we will find that healing, restoring, and transforming love. Receive now our prayers of praise, our worship, our thanksgiving. Receive us as we gather to worship you. We gather our hearts and minds before God in prayer. Living rock of our abundant life, our God who sustains us in the complexity of our humanity, we gather just as we are this morning with our cares and concerns, longing to touch the hem of your clock and find healing in your embrace. We thank you from the vulnerable yet wonderful gift of life. In need of God, to be alive today and to know it is, is an unspeakable honor. 
We are grateful that even during this difficult period of our lives, you continue to be present in us and with us in opportunities to lift us up into the awareness of your presence and your love, charging us, moving us, molding us, molding us for the better. May our time of worship be a joyful response of praise and thanksgiving for all that you have done, for all that you are doing, and for all that you will continue to do for us. We pray that you will guide us to open our hearts a lot more to you, so that you can strengthen our faith and heal our brokenness. We pray that through your, the power of your Holy Spirit, and in the name of your, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, we will be awakened to the power of your presence moving in us even now. Amen. So friends, we receive our gospel lesson for this morning, and it comes from Luke's gospel, chapter 19, and I read the first 10 verses of the chapter. Jesus and Zacchaeus. Jesus went on into Jericho and was passing through. There was a chief tax collector there named Zacchaeus, who was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but was a little man 
and could not see because of the crowd. So he ran ahead of the crowd and climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus, who was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, to that place, he looked up and said to Zacchaeus, Hurry down, Zacchaeus, because I must stay in your house today. Zacchaeus hurried down and welcomed him with great joy. All the people who saw it started grumbling. This man has gone, has gone as a guest to the home of a sinner, they proclaimed. Jesus stood up and said to the and said, Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Listen, sir, I give half of my belongings to the poor, and I have if I have cheated anyone, I will pay back four times as much. Jesus said to him, Salvation has come to this house today, for this man also is a descendant of Abraham, the son of of man came to seek and to save the lost. This is the gospel of Christ and thanks be to God.
So friends, as usual, we share the peace when we gather as the people of God. Even though we gather in distant places, we share that beauty of the fellowship of the church across space and time and divide. May the peace of the living God and the living Christ be with you. From this place to your homes, receive the peace of God. And please share the peace with those, your loved ones around you as we worship this day. And so we come to the time of thanksgiving and giving to God as we always do in this time of worship. As it is our stewardship month, let me challenge you to think um, consciously about how you are giving and how you continue to support the work of this church. You would remember that as part of our commitment to each other, we run the soup kitchen and the feeding scheme in this place and we continue to support many other projects as a community and we continue to give to god's work to expand what god does amongst us here so please as we walk through this month of stewardship may i invite you to reconsider and prayerfully consider what you continue to give to god whether you do it um, through electronic transfer or whether you use the snap scan or any other medium that's convenient to you to give to this church we ask that you continue to do that and may God richly bless you as you do that come let us pray, bless the gifts for this day gracious and loving God we thank you for your generosity you are the greatest giver of all in your life and in your son and in your very being you constantly give to us grace and mercy and love and forgiveness and peace and all the things that we receive so generously and so freely. So God, in our response to your gifts of grace, we give that which we can give in our lives, through our talents and 
and all our treasures and all our time, and we dedicate ourselves to you. Bless that which will be given this week to your work and to your kingdom. In the name of Christ and for his sake. Amen. Greetings from the stewards in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We would like to thank you for your faithful giving and support for the church during this time. There are two ways to give your Sunday offering and monthly tithing during the lockdown period. Firstly, you can use the bank details that are reflected on the screen. And secondly, you can use the SnapScan app. If you have not used the SnapScan before, please follow the instructions that are shown on the screen to download and use the app easily. Thank you. And I want us to start with some of the pastoral needs in this community. We know of a number of people that have reported to have contracted COVID. Some are isolating at home and some have been hospitalized. So I want us to think about them and hold them in our prayers. But we have also received a number of bereavements and they are in your notices. But I want to also just draw your attention to to the one of those bereavements that we've lost our deputy chairperson, Ubabu um, Ketlan Tembu, and I want you to to think of his family and think of his children at this time. Friends, it's also a very sad time for the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. We have lost quite a number of ministers to COVID over the last year. Some people count to the number 25 um, of ministers that we've lost due to COVID. And that means 25 families and 20, 25 families and children that have lost um, their parents and people that have lost their significant others. And amongst those that we have lost in this last week is the Reverend Naba Boy, who has been serving in this district, and it's also the Reverend Tapelo Dilokwe whom you in this community have um, affectionately called Pastor T, and you have known as a friend and a member of this community. So I ask that you also think of him and think of Sis Hupedi and the children at this time. Come, let us pray. Gracious God, we ask that you will be near to those that are sick at home and in hospital those that feel the vulnerability of wrestling the challenge of COVID, those that care from a distance and love from a distance, who can't even visit their loved ones at the hospital. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will surround them with your care and your provision. I want to lift up to you, O oh loving God, the families of those that have lost loved ones, those whom we know of and those we haven't received reports of. I ask that you receive their loved ones into your arms of mercy. And I ask that you pour your holy and life-giving spirit to comfort their families with love and tenderness and care. As so, all God, I pray that you will be their safety and their provision at this time. In the name of Christ, Lord, hear our prayers.
Come, let us pray. Lord, turn our thoughts into prayers, turn our prayers into love, and turn our love into a life of generosity and stewardship in holding on to the things that you've given to us and giving them back to you generously. Amen. My dear friends, good morning once more. And so the, today I want us to reflect on the second Sunday of our stewardship on the question that we have given to this text, to the, to the second Sunday of our reflections. So the theme for this morning, we ask the question, what's spiritual about giving? What is the spirituality of stewardship and giving in the life of the church? You'd remember last week we asked a question, should we dare talk about money during COVID? And I argued last week that there's never a time when we cannot speak about money in the life of the church. And particularly now, when a lot of people are in desperate circumstances, we do need to speak about money and what it means to be the people of God in a time like this. So for our reflection this morning, I want to draw a number of insights out of the text that we read, the text which is a familiar text about Jesus and Zacchaeus. I want you to just read the text almost from a purely stewardship um, perspective this morning and invite you to reflect with me on a number of things that go on in the text. The first thing that I want to draw out in our conversation today is the whole idea that in the church we often struggle to talk about money and I wonder how you often talk about it. The struggle to talk about money sometimes is linked to the idea that when we start talking about money we often start by asking the questions how much should I give? Why should I give? And maybe to what cause should I give? And yet I think the issue that the text this morning and all of our thinking and theology around stewardship invites us to the questions that are prior to the question of how much and what and how and all of that to almost the why should we give in the first instance. So I want to invite you to this text because I think the subject that we're talking about is so pertinent and clear when we speak, when we read Zacchaeus' text. You would remember that the story of Zacchaeus happens in this way. There is a crowd that's walking with Jesus towards Jericho. It would seem to me that Zacchaeus hears the story that Jesus is coming and sees and probably has heard about Jesus, knows something about Jesus. And as he knows about Jesus, he then runs ahead of the crowd because he wants to get an audience. The text give us, gives us details that he was a little man. Some text says he was short. And I don't want to focus on what that might mean. People have tried to explain what it means to be short spiritually, what it means to be short in any way. Those things are besides my engagement this morning. What's important for me is that he had a deep desire to encounter Jesus. And as with his desire to encounter Jesus, he runs ahead of the crowd. And as the text is narrated, when Jesus comes to that place, that sycamore tree that Zacchaeus had climbed onto, Jesus stands and stops to give Zacchaeus attention. There's something about that in the nature of Jesus, that Jesus was attentive to the people that were searching for him, to everyone that's seeking a relationship with him. And as he stands, what then Jesus does, he looks up and he invites Zacchaeus to come down the sycamore tree. The story lands up at Jesus and Zacchaeus at home, in Zacchaeus' home, and having dinner and celebrating a moment of fellowship. In that moment of fellowship, what then happens is that Zacchaeus is challenged by the presence of Jesus in a manner that reorients his whole life. So that is my first point in today, that when Jesus is encountered, when Zacchaeus is encountered by Jesus, 
his whole life and whole outlook at what life is about and the nature of his very life is changed and swallowed up in a new, a new reality. Zacchaeus had lived up to that time in a particular economic framework, perhaps in an economic framework like we live in now. Money is the, is the key word that drives the world around. Money is the dividing force between the rich and the poor. Money controls the development of communities. Money is the center of corruption. Money is the center of all these narratives that we experience in the world and in the church. And so when Jesus encounters Zacchaeus, the first thing that happens in Zacchaeus' encounter with Jesus is that Jesus encounters him so deeply that Zacchaeus rises from the table and he proclaims these words to Jesus. And he declares this, Look, Jesus, half of my possessions I will give to the poor. I will, if I have defrauded anyone, I will pay them back four times as much. That's a very important declaration from Zacchaeus. Please note a number of things about Zacchaeus' declaration. The first thing I want you to note about Zacchaeus' declaration is that Zacchaeus does not abandon his money. Zacchaeus doesn't abandon his money. As most people would argue that Zacchaeus' Zacchaeus' life is changed, but Zacchaeus in this text, he doesn't abandon his riches or his wealth or his money. He doesn't give it away completely. So that's the first thing I want us to notice. The second thing I want us to notice in this test that Zacchaeus doesn't, doesn't, t- doesn't leave the profession that he's doing. But what Re- Zacchaeus does, he says, I want to do something in a different way now that I've encountered Jesus. So the importance of stewardship and thinking about the spirituality of giving is that it is, it is an important matter for us to think about what orients our relationship with money, what influences and what shapes and what gives perspective to us when we are to deal with money. Whether it's our money or whether it's public money or whatever money that we're dealing with, what orients our relationship with money? So what happens in this text then, Zacchaeus retains both his job and his wealth, but He is encountered by Jesus deep enough that he begins to see his wealth from a different perspective. So these are the things that Zacchaeus does. The first thing Zacchaeus does, he pledges to use his money differently. And part of the difference is that he pledges that he will give some of his money, a substantial amount of his money, half of probably his wealth towards the poor. So the first thing that you have to recognize is that the way that Jesus and Zacchaeus were entering into a relationship, in Zacchaeus' life, the impact of Jesus was that it connected Zacchaeus with the community around him. Zacchaeus from this moment recognized the poor and recognized the relationship between the poor and with resources and recognized his status in the community and as he recognized his status in the community he then was able and set free in his very mind and being to be able to share what he had with the poor that's the first impact that jesus has with zacchaeus the second thing that zacchaeus does as the impact from the impact that jesus has on him he then pledges that i am not only going to give to the poor but I am also going to analyze and rewire my ethics about how I go about with my business and my profession as as a tax collector. And so then he says, if in the past I have dealt with people in a manner that dropped them off income, I will atone more than four times of that that I dropped off people. So the second thing that happens in the relationship between Jesus, it is not only that Jesus reorients how Zacchaeus sees his money, but he also reshapes his ethics 
of money and his ethics of how to deal with his property and his possessions and all of those things. So at the heart of that is the question that begs to be answered. How does the impact of your being a follower of Jesus, how does you being a follower of Jesus, how does that shape how you deal with your own money, the money that you are responsible for? How does it influence your choices? How does it influence how you share your resources? How does it influence how you give to church? How does it influence how you see the poor? How does it influence how you see those that are richer than you and those that are poorer than you? How does it influence how you share the things that you have? How does Jesus influence that? And how does Jesus influence your ethics around all of those things? So then Zacchaeus starts marshalling his resources in a new way. The power of God on Zacchaeus' life made him see himself, made him see his resources, made him see his context, made him see the world, and made him see everything in a different perspective. And he started seeing things from the way that Jesus sees the world. That's the power of the story of Zacchaeus. Also, some, one writer says, if you were to probably nail down the core or probably the driving message of the change that happens in Zacchaeus, he says, the message would seem to be that while money may make the world go round, in Zacchaeus' story, we learn that the true value lies, even if the money makes the world go round. Zacchaeus' story tells us that the axis that makes Zacchaeus' wealth turn is changed on this day. If Zacchaeus' if Zacchaeus' world was spinning around greed or self-centeredness or self-concern, it is moved across, and now Zacchaeus' wealth spins around God's concerns and a different set of values. So his axis is reshaped and reconfigured in the heart of this story. Zacchaeus begins to journey with his money and possessions in a way that he becomes of service to the community and of service to God. Stewardship at its heart is a reorientation of our hearts and of our minds, of our actions, and of how we distribute the economics of our lives and everything that we have. Stewardship in another way, maybe perhaps, is about the shifting of perspective from climbing up that sycamore tree to self selfish needs, to climbing down that sycamore tree to serve the needs of those around us. The difference that happens in Zacchaeus tree is in that Zacchaeus moment is that when Jesus finds Zacchaeus all his life, he had lived to serve his own needs. Jesus invites him to a different way towards a downward mobility of service to the community, to the people of God, and to the kingdom of God. What tree are you climbing? How are you organizing your life? Is it, are you organizing your life around your own selfish needs, around your own things, and around all the things that are important to you? Or are you organizing your life to combine your needs and the things that you need for yourself with the needs of others. True spirituality, true authentic stewardship is about how we manage what God has gifted to us and how we manage it in relationship to the people of God and to the world. We are never blind to what God is doing around us. We are never blind to what God is doing, even through our resources. So Zacchaeus' encounter with Jesus transforms his whole life. It reorients him and reorients everything he does with himself and his life. It connects him with context and neighbors and friends and people around him. It, it, it builds in his heart new commitments that he never had before he encountered Jesus. Before he encountered Jesus, he never wondered about the poor. He never worried about giving to anything else except gaining for himself. But meeting Jesus 
changes his whole perspective and commitments, even financial commitments, it changes everything about what it is. May I dare suggest that giving and spirituality and discipleship are all about ordering our lives and reordering our lives in light of the Jesus that we have encountered, in light of the love of God that we have received, in light of the one that welcomes himself to dine with us every day, in light of the one that has offered us grace and has changed our lives and has reoriented us to face God was. So one commentator says, please notice that in the story of Zacchaeus, Jesus doesn't talk about salvation coming to Zacchaeus' house before the change. Jesus only says, Zac salvation has come to your house after Zacchaeus has transformed and has moved across the room, has repented, has changed his ways, and has reconfigured his whole existence. And then Jesus only then says, salvation has come to this house. And apart from just saying, on top of saying, salvation has come into this house, Jesus even says, now Zacchaeus, you have reclaimed your place as the son of Abraham. You'd remember what Abraham means for scripture. Abraham is the one that was called to the service of the people of God. He was called with that one signature line in scripture. You have been called and blessed to become a blessing to every generation. So the heart of stewardship is that you grow your spiritual life, you encounter God such so that your life is set free to serve the world, to touch the world, to be of good service to the kingdom of God. So giving is part of our spiritual response to the material needs of those around us, but it is also a response to the love that is given to us. It is a loving response to the things that God has done, done for us. So I want to use just six bits of lines to probably hold this together to speak about giving. So what do we learn out of this story that can be take homes for us this morning? The first thing is that Zacchaeus, as Zacchaeus comes to encounter Jesus, giving becomes an act of worship. His taking of all that he has been given and placing it in the hands of God and distributing it in light of God's love. So giving at the heart of it is it a general it is a response to God's generosity and it is a joyful and a grateful response to the one that has come to dine with us in Jesus Christ. So that's the first thing that I want to say giving is about. It is an act of worship in response and in gratitude to the grace and the mercy of God in our lives. The second thing I want to say that giving is an act of stewardship. Not only just an act of worship, as Zacchaeus does, he worships and calls Jesus Lord, but giving is also an act of stewardship. As soon as Zacchaeus was encountered Jesus, he had to look deeply into the things that he had. And stewardship, and stewardship at the heart of it is about how we manage and rearrange our lives in light of God's presence and in light of God's spirit and in light of God's life in us. And so once Zacchaeus had encountered Jesus, he begins a journey of stewardship and beginning of, and beginning of that was that he's going to share with the poor, he's going to make sure he pays debts to those he owes and he's going to now become a tax collector who is conscious of the presence of God in his life. So giving is an act of worship. Giving is an act of stewardship. And thirdly, giving as scripture invites us is a command that is given to us by God. It is a discipline. As in Meadows theology, you would say, you would understand the term discipline. It is a practice that deepens our faith and trust in God. It enables us to enter into a relationship with God. When we learn how to give, we perfect and grow our following of Jesus. It is an act of discipleship, an act of obedience, and an act 
that is a response to the call of God on our lives. And so as we give, we are actually responding and learning to follow in the, in the steps of the one that has given not only just his love, but his very son to us. As John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that God gave. God is a generous and giving God. And the God that has given to us calls us back to give to him. So God, we, worship, we, we give as an act of worship and an act of stewardship and as a command and an obligation to grow our form of discipleship. Then on the, the fourth one is giving is an act of redemption. In the story of Zacchaeus, salvation is linked to the idea of resources. Our resources and the salvation of the world can never be separated. What I do with my money affects the world. How I earn my money, how I distribute my money, how I hold my money, or how I give my money is all part of my service to God. So what I do with my money can be used as, re as a redemptive tool for the world. And so as in this church we do, we, are, we, have, we have the fountain of healing as a way that we are trying to deal with justice issues and social issues in the church. We have the feeding scheme to try and deal with the, poor, with the most vulnerable of our society and give food to the hungry. We have all other means of trying to make sure that when we give, our giving is redemptive to those that we give to us. So when we give to the church, our giving also does some of that work as part of a redemptive call. Giving is also an act of charity. Giving is also an act of charity. Charity is the place when our giving is an expression of our compassion, of becoming generous. As a disciple of Christ, you're growing in generosity. Not, Zacchaeus didn't go to a generosity school. Zacchaeus didn't go to learn about economics the day he met Jesus. But the, meeting Jesus made his heart loosen up and it evoked compassion and it made him generous and was able to offer himself to some needs more than himself. And lastly, giving is an act of justice. And as I said earlier, Zacchaeus' giving was linked to his ethics. And so as we give, we can give to causes that bring about justice to the world. We can give to causes that, that strengthen justice in the world. We can give to causes that stop corruption in other places in the world. So our giving is also an act of justice that helps to distribute to the poorest and the most vulnerable of society. And so my hope is that in whatever tree that you are climbing, maybe you are climbing a tree of just looking after yourself and your own needs. The story of Zacchaeus invites us to the heart of spirituality. And the heart of spirituality is that God reorients us in encountering us. And in that reorientation, we are invited to be new people. And when I invited to be new people, we learn how to worship with our money, to be stewards with our money, to be generous with our money, to be intentional about how we love and purposefully love with our money through compassion and redemption and even with acts of justice. And so may God bless you as you reflect on this text. And may God bless you as you think about how you relate with your resources. And may God bless us as we continue with our stewardship series. In the name of Christ and for his sake. Amen. I would like us to pray for, for the political situation in this country. Um, and I want us to pray about the political situation in Swaziland. And I want us to pray about the political situation in Mozambique. As all of these are happening within our connection. Come let us pray. Gracious and loving God, in the times when even our definitions of justice are tested, you are the just ruler. Guide our leadership with your wisdom. Guide those that rule and judge in, the, in our land with your wisdom that is deeper than the justice of our systems. We pray, O oh God, that you would raise up out of this moment, lead us 
that will lead us to a different place, a place of truth, a place of equality, and a place where your people will know the fruits of what freedom costs, a place that we can share in the benefit of what it means to be part of this country, beautiful country, South Africa. But Lord, we also think of at this time, especially of our province, this province of Houghton that is affected deeply by COVID. But also we have amongst the victims of COVID in this province, we've just received the news of the death of, our, of the mayor in this province. And so, O oh God, we ask that you will be with the mayor's family and comfort them and surround them with your love and your care. So, Lord, we extend our prayers to the peoples of Swaziland. We know, oh God, that even there, through the protests, so many have lost their lives. And we know, Lord, there's still a statement in making sure that a peaceful transition into a democratic dispensation can come into being. So we pray that you will create a sense of understanding, that you will open doors for meaningful dialogue, that you will open doors for a better way of communication and engagement that will lead to peace and prosperity and the welfare of the citizens of the Kingdom of Eswatini. We pray for its government that you would give them a receptive heart. We pray for the king that you would open his heart to the words and the cries of the people of that land. We remember, O oh God, the troubles that Mozambique has faced in the Kautempo area. And we ask that you, as many people have also been tragically affected by the circumstances there, with insurgents and all forms of trials, we ask that you, O oh God, who sees beyond the horizon of our hearts and our imagination, would whisper and pave pathways of restoration and dignity for all people in that place. These are our prayers in the name of Christ and for his sake. Amen. And lastly, friends, as we continue with our stewardship month, let's continue to bring our prayers for our stewardship campaign and also our service together as a community. Generous and loving God, we thank you for your generosity. Thank you for inviting us, even today, through the story of Zacchaeus, to consider within our hearts what it means to reorient our lives towards you. Help us, O oh God, as we think and pray as a congregation through these COVID times, that we may remain faithful to your call. Help us to be wise in our use of resources. Help us to be generous to the places that you call us to be generous to. Help us to see the places that need your love more than others in this time. Oh God, bless our giving, bless our, bless our stewardship, and bless all every ministry of this church for your kingdom and for your sake. Amen. And so from where you are and from here, we now pronounce the benediction. So please pronounce it in your mother tongue from where we are as we join in the benediction. Amen.